Hi everyone, good morning. Thank you for being with us today. It has been so cold this week, hence why I am in all my jumpers and coats and hat and scarf because it's freezing. I hope you've survived the ice and the cold weather. Hopefully it'll warm up a bit next time, next week. Um, I hope you guys are doing all all right. We've seen a lot of you during the week, which has been cool. Um, you can obviously still join us on Zoom Wednesdays and Thursdays. You can watch us on YouTube on a Sunday or any time. There's tons and tons of videos on our YouTube channel that you can connect with. Um, you can watch our Sunday service with all the adults in. That's absolutely fine as well. You can do it all. You can do everything. It's so good that we're able to connect with you this way and hopefully it's not too long till we can be back here in person seeing you guys. Um, it's half term now, isn't it? So I hope you have a nice break off homeschooling for a couple of days. Um, get out and do some walking and some exercise safely and with the people you're allowed to. But take some time for yourself. Spend some time with God. Look after yourself. Treat yourself. Do something you enjoy. It's been a difficult six weeks of this year so far, hasn't it? Um, but half term so yeah, it's a time to rest to relax, to do some stuff that you enjoy, whether that's playing on a PlayStation, whether that is watching YouTube, whether that is making Rubik's Cubes, um, do whatever you need to do this week to take time for yourself. Look after your mind and your body and your spirit. It's important that we look after our health in that way, um, that we take time for ourselves, take our thoughts and our feelings and emotions seriously, to give ourselves a break. If you're feeling down, if you're feeling worried or anxious, Spend some time with God, spend some time with the people that you love and trust and talk, open up. I know it's difficult, but say, you know what? This has been this has been making me feel sad. This has been making me feel worried. Try and be open and honest. If you need someone to chat to, get in touch with us here. I'd love to have a conversation with you if you're feeling down. Um, so get in touch, put a comment or get your photos to give me a call or whatever. Um, take some time, look after yourself. It's gonna be all right soon. So this morning, I want us to have a little look at a parable that Jesus shares in the New Testament. Do you know what a parable is? If you do, stick it in the comments. A parable is a story with a meaning. So we're gonna read this story. You might've heard it before, you might not have. It's a story that Jesus tells to his friends, to his followers, and it is called The Great Banquet. So if you've got your Bible, Open it up to Luke, which is in the which testament? The New Testament. Luke chapter 14, verse 15 to 23. We're going to read all the way through. So if you want to follow along, follow along. If you just want to listen, just listen. The parable of the great banquet says this. <clears throat> when one of those at the table with him, with Jesus, heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I've just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on the way to try them out. So please excuse me. Still another said, I've just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited to my banquet will get a taste of my banquet. So what do you think was going on there? Jesus tells the story of a man who is having a great banquet, a great party, a great feast, and he invites some specific people. And all the specific people come up with an excuse why they can't come. Three excuses. One, I've just bought a field and I must go and look at it. Two, I've just bought some ox to work in my field, so I've got to go and look after them. And three, I've just got married, so I need to go and spend time with the person I've just got married to. Three excuses. One, the first excuse I think is pretty rubbish. I've bought a field and I need to go and look at it. What? You know what a field looks like. If you just bought it, you're already going to know what it looks like. So for me, that's a bad excuse. The second one is, 
I've just bought some ox and I need to go and check them out. Well, it's not a good ex well, it's an all right excuse, isn't it? You've spent a lot of money on some animals to work for you, to make some money for you, so you better go and test and check that they're all right. If they're animals, they need to be looked after. So it's kind of an all right excuse, but I don't see why you couldn't say, oh, well, I'll do it before or do it after or do it tomorrow. So for me, that is an okay excuse. And then the final excuse, I've just got married, so I've got to go and spend time with the person I got married to, is I think that's a pretty good excuse, isn't it? And I think we could all agree that's an okay excuse. When you get married, you've got to spend time with your other half. You've got to do it because you're not going to, it's not going to be happy if you're just going off to banquets all the time. So we've got a bad excuse, a good excuse, and a great excuse. But all of these excuses are still not good enough for this guy, for the master who is sent uh, organize this feast. So he says, right guys, go out to the streets, invite everybody. Invite the blind people, the lame people, the crippled people, the poor people. Now we might think in our way of living, well this is kind of normal, isn't it? Shouldn't we be kind? Shouldn't we be nice? But in these times we've got to remember who the people listening and what the kind of culture was at the time. So at this time it's really not very popular to associate with people that are poor. So this man's clearly quite rich, he's putting on a banquet, he's invited all these dudes, they've all said no. And he's like, right, okay, but I'm going to invite the unpopular people. And that is a bit of a risk, because he's, his friends, his associates, the people that in his family or his circle that he mixes with are going to see him with all these poor people. And they're going to think, what is going on? Like, he's inviting all these not very nice people into his house. It's not a good thing. This would bring down his reputation. This is not a popular thing to do. But all of these people that his servant goes out to, all of these poor people, these broken people on the streets, come to his banquet. And then he says, I've still got room. Go out even further, even further, even further and invite them all in. More people come, more people attend, more people are at his banquet having a great time. Now, what do you think the banquet or the feast is a picture of, a metaphor of. Have a think. It's trying to describe the kingdom of God. God's way of living, God's family, God's circle, heaven, the kingdom of God. And who is the master? But the master represents God. And in the Old Testament, God reaches out to groups of people and he says, you should come and be in my family. Forget about the sin. Do this, do that. Come, stop making excuses. Join together. I've chosen you. And what do the people in the Old Testament do? They say, you know what, I've tried, but it's not for me. Oh, I've done a little bit, but I can't get quite get there. And they turn their back on God and say, we can live without you. And that's exactly what the people he invite to his banquet in this story, in this parable, exactly what they say. They come up with excuses, one bad, one okay, and one good. And in the Old Testament and as humans, we have sometimes bad excuses, sometimes good excuses, sometimes great excuses for turning around and saying, God, I don't have time for you today. But all of our excuses, whether we think they're great or we think they're terrible, are completely full to pieces when we look at them from the perspective of, God, perspective of God. He is the one that created us, who loves us, and we should do everything to spend all of our time with him. He invites us to an amazing party, to an amazing feast, and we often turn around and say, no, I've got better things to do. But I think the master in this parable knew that he had enough space to invite more people. Because you don't just invite three people and then end up inviting 300 people by mistake, do you? He knew what was going to happen, I think, because he had prepared this place. He was prepared to invite everybody from the streets, the country lanes and the area around. That's what it says. He was prepared. He had enough seats, enough cutlery, enough plates and enough food to invite everybody who maybe wouldn't have been so popular. And that's the story of Jesus, isn't it? We see Jesus come into the earth and saying, you know what, guys? It doesn't matter about your excuses. It doesn't matter what you look like, what you sound like, where you come from, your history. It doesn't matter if you people look down on you, if you're not popular. I want you to come to my party. I want you to come to my feast. I want you to join and accept my invitation. All you've got to do is come and sit with me and I'll tell you everything about me. And then you can follow me and join in my kingdom. So this meaning, the meaning of this story is God invites everyone to his kingdom. Me, you, that person over there walking by the shops, God invites them, all of us, to his kingdom. What excuses have we made? What excuses do we put up? 
what things do we do that we think are all right or other people think well I've got this instead and we what do people do to turn their back on God all we've got to do is accept the invitation all we've got to do in relationship with Jesus is say you know what I was a sinner please forgive me I want to try my best to follow you it's quite straightforward sometimes it's tricky but it's quite simple simple and difficult can exist side by side can't they God is happy, the master is happy to invite everybody to his table to celebrate this great banquet. So he is happy to invite you, he is happy to invite the person on the bench having their lunch, he is happy to invite your friends, your family, the people that hate him, the people that will make him look bad, he is happy to invite them to come and eat his great banquet. So to finish off, three things or three ways this might apply to us. If you're watching this video, it doesn't matter who you are, if you're part of our church, if you're from Shirley or Solihull, or if you're watching from outer space, I don't care. These three things are for you. One, you can be at God's table. You might have already accepted God's invitation. You might have already sat down. You might already be Christian. You might already be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, but you might not. You are invited to be at God's table. He wants you to come and sit with him, to learn from him, to accept his invitation. This great time of eating, of celebrating and having a party because the kingdom of heaven is like a party. God wants to party. Jesus loves to party. You can be at God's table. Number two, anybody you know in your family, in your school, in your community, your neighbours, the people that you like, the people you don't like, anybody can come and sit at God's table. Doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how you identify yourself, doesn't matter if you think church doesn't accept you, doesn't matter if you think people won't love you for who you are, you can come and sit at God's table. What does the parable say? It says, go out and invite everybody. Go out to the roads, go out to the city, go out to the towns. Invite everyone compel them to come in so my house will be full. God wants his house to be full. So people you know, doesn't matter what they think, they can come and eat at God's table. And the third thing is if we're there, if we're sitting, if we're eating at God's table, it is our job sometimes to say, I'm going to come and invite some more people. Is that all right? There is always space. And the third thing is that it's your job, your responsibility, your role that the master that God trusts you with to go out into the streets and invite people to come. So how can you do that? You don't have to be sitting actually around a table and giving everybody loads of food. What are the things that you can do that might encourage, compel, invite people to come and have a taste of what God is about, have an experience of what Jesus is? Maybe it's in your conversation. Maybe it's in stuff we do in church. Maybe it's sending someone a link to a video. Maybe it's praying for someone in quiet times. What are the things that you can do that is like passing a party invitation? Hey, do you want to come and get to know Jesus? We don't have to explain everything. We don't have to cook all the food. God does that. We just have to say, do you want to come? Come and sit by me if you like. Come and enjoy God's presence. Come and learn. At the end of the day, it's your choice. It's their choice. We can say yes. We can say no. We can say I've got better things to do. But as long as we share the invitation, share the miracle that is the feast, this great banquet, God, the kingdom of heaven, we can do that. So you can be at God's table. Everybody you know can be at God's table and you can invite anyone you see, anyone you come across. You just have to think, how is the best way, God, what is the best way to do this? So guys, thank you for watching. We miss you. We love you. If you want to share this video with someone, do it, send it to them, text it to them, ping it to them. Say, I'm inviting you to come and experience what Jesus is like. You can say yes, you can say no. You can say, let's give it a go. Who knows what can happen when we invite people to join in the great banquet. Thank you for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, things you want to say, put them in the comments below this video. Get in touch with me. Send us a picture of what you've been up to today. I don't know. It'd be nice to see you guys soon. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And we will catch you on Zoom in the week. See ya.